Hey, what's going on everybody? So I've been getting a lot of questions about my 360 degree videos and I wanna put a quick video together explaining the process, the things you need, software, accessories, to make your own 360 videos. So let's jump right in. The first thing you need to know is that there's different 360 mounts that you can buy. The one I'm using here, this is the Freedom 360 and there's another company out there called 360 Heroes. I don't have any experience using that mount so I'm only gonna be talking about the Freedom 360 mount here. So I've got six GoPro Hero 4 Blacks in this mount. Um, this mount is actually $500 and you can imagine it gets pretty pricey once you start sticking GoPros in there. The tripod that I'm using is just a standard light stand. Um, it's pretty good because you don't want a tripod that has like a big base because then the 360 mount picks up that base there and it just looks kind of ugly. I got this stand for $80, but it's a light kit and it came with four different light stands with all the light bulbs, umbrellas and all that. So you could probably pick one of these up on Amazon for maybe 20 bucks. It's not too bad. This extends to about, I would say maybe six feet. Um, so I'm gonna have to change my location because they're starting to cut grass here. Okay, I'm inside now. I should be free of noise. So the one problem with this light stand is that it's not sturdy enough. So if it's windy, it's gonna kind of wobble a little bit. So they actually sell mounts that are made specifically for 360 cameras. So if you want something that's really professional, um, you can actually just check out the description. I'll link to one, but you gotta remember it is very pricey. So um, if you're gonna be doing like crazy professional stuff, I would go for that. If you're just gonna be uh, just learning, just starting out, a simple light stand is fine. A tripod's fine too, but remember what I said, if there's a big base, it's gonna pick that up. The next thing I wanna talk about is the cameras in your 360 mount. So ideally, you wanna have the same cameras in the mount. And also, you wanna make sure that the cameras that you're using supports a four by three aspect ratio. You can't use 16 by nine because it's, it's cropped, it's like a, a rectangle. If you use four by three, it's a nice big square. So um, the field of view of the cameras captures a really wide view so that um, the software has enough stitch points so that you have a nice spherical 360 video. Now with the Hero 4 Black, you have several settings. You could use 960p, 1440p, or 2.7K uh, 4 by three. So you have to use the four by three aspect ratio modes. So now in each four by three aspect ratio mode in the camera, each mode supports different frame rates. So the next thing you gotta remember is to use the same frame rate on every single camera. Now with 2.7K four by three, you get a max of 30 frames per second. Uh, to 1440p, you get a max of 80 frames per second. And I believe 960p is a max of 120 frames per second. Now, if you don't use the same frame rate on every single camera, the synchronization process in the stitching software is gonna be thrown off and your footage is basically gonna be useless. So make sure you use the same frame rate and video modes on every single camera. For a nice 4K output, I normally use 1440p on every camera and 48 frames per second. You can also use 60 frames per second. And then in your editing software, you can actually drop that frame rate to 30 frames per second or just keep it at the original frame rate. It's really no problem. Now this next thing is more for an advanced 360 video, which you don't necessarily have to follow this if you're just starting out. But just imagine you're filming outside. The cameras that are filming towards the sky, like towards the sun, are gonna be very overexposed, very bright. And the ones that are pointing downwards are gonna be a little darker. So in the stitching process, you're gonna have certain cameras that look dark and then certain ones that look very bright. Now, one way to overcome that is to enable ProTune on the cameras and adjust the uh, exposure on each one to match, uh, you know, so they match all together. Now, like I said, this is more for like an advanced, I would say, you don't need to mess with that because in the stitching software, there's a color correction feature which will fix all that on the fly in like a snap. It's just really simple. So I'll show you that a little bit later. So if you're just starting out, I would just recommend putting the cameras all in the same mode, same frame rates, and just leave it all auto. Don't even worry about it because if you're just starting out, it doesn't matter how it looks in the beginning. So once you get used to the process and you get a little better at it, you can start messing around with all those settings. 
But if you're filming in a really dark location, I would highly recommend turning on ProTune and bumping up the ISO as high as possible. Now, AutoPano Video Pro has two main purposes, one being synchronization and the other being stitching. Now, synchronization is so important. If you don't synchronize each camera perfectly, when somebody's walking by, their head will be like on one camera, their body would be on like another, and their legs will be somewhere else. So it just will look like so horrible. Now there's two ways to synchronize your footage. First of all, you wanna use the GoPro Wi-Fi remote link them up to the remote, all six cameras, so that you can hit record, so they all start at the same time. Actually, they don't all start at the same time. One camera will start like a millisecond later than the other, so each camera doesn't actually start at the same time when you use the Wi-Fi remote. So now, in the editing software, there's in AutoPano Video Pro, there's two methods. You can use a sound method for synchronization, so after you hit record, wait a few seconds, and then, clap like three times very close to the rig and that would be one method of synchronization. Um, you have to clap, it has to be a nice loud noise. The other synchronization method that works really well is motion and what I do is I'll hit record, wait a few seconds, pick up the mount and spin it around. <laughs> I'll spin it around like that, I hit the other tripod and that motion is detected by Auto Panel Video Pro and it'll synchronize that way. Now, what I normally do is I'll do the spin motion and as a backup, I'll also clap just in case the motion is uh, not perfect or something. Just You wanna do both methods just so you're not stuck later trying to manually synchronize all the cameras. So with the Freedom 360 mount, it's actually labeled on the mount. This is camera one, camera two is on the other side, three, four, five, six. So you wanna make sure that you know which camera is which. Now when I import, uh, say, camera one into my computer, I'll actually name that clip camera one, and then camera two will be cam two, cam three, all the way up to cam six. You wanna make sure you know which one is which because at the end when you're done uh, stitching all your clips, when you output the footage, you can choose which audio source you wanna take the audio from. So if I was standing, say, in front of camera one here, I would wanna take the audio, so audio source from camera one since I'm facing in that direction. So it just makes it a little easier later in editing so you just know which camera is which. So up until now, I covered the stand you need, the mount, the cameras, the settings, how to synchronize your footage. So now I'm gonna go into the software and show you exactly how to synchronize all the cameras, how to stitch them, and let's get into that right now. So this is AutoPano Video Pro 2, and I'm using the new update 2.2. And what I wanna do is go to File and Import Some Videos. So what I have here is cam one, clip one, and I'm also gonna choose cam two, clip one, cam three, clip one, cam four, five, and six. So those are my six clips that I wanna to stitch together. So now it's just importing the clips, and the next step is going to be to synchronize all the clips together. So you can see here I have six clips, and basically they did not start recording at the same time, so that's why you wanna synchronize them. So down here at the bottom, I'm gonna to go to the point at which I started to spin the, the rig around. It looks like we're starting to get some movement on camera three here, so I'm gonna to go to synchro, and I have this set to 10 seconds, which is fine, but if you need to use more like 30 seconds. What, it, what this will do is search 30 seconds before, 30 seconds after the point at which you put the marker at, and it'll detect the movement using that indicator. So 10 seconds is fine for what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna do use motion to synchronize, and this does take some time. It has to look through, uh, like I said, 10 seconds before and 10 seconds after to uh, have an accurate synchronization. 100%. So now each camera is properly synchronized because you can see here it says accurate synchronization found. So what you wanna do next is click apply. And now each camera is adjusted to the specific point at which they need to be. So I'm just gonna X this window out. We don't need that anymore. So I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here into about 10 seconds, maybe a little more. Yeah, about 14 seconds. So we're gonna to go to stitch and I'm gonna select GoPro because that's the that's the 
cameras that I'm using, and then I'm gonna do stitch at current position. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna do uh, current position because it's a lot quicker than current selection, although the current selection feature is a lot more accurate. So you might wanna use that when you're doing your videos. So I'll just click stitch and the video is gonna to stitch together. Okay, we can see here it's almost done. I'm just gonna X out the stitch window and X, and X out the input videos. We don't need that anymore. So you can see that it's stitched together. It looks pretty good. And what you can do in this window here is adjust the middle point. And so when you start watching the 360 video, this area here will be the center of like what will be in the center. What this also helps you do is adjust the horizon. So if you have, say, if the camera was on the stand and it was slanted a little bit, you can actually fix the horizon so that it's straight. So my camera was perfectly straight, so my horizon is pretty much perfect here. So the first thing we notice is what I mentioned before. So the cameras that are pointed at the sky were overexposed, very bright. So what the camera did in auto, in, uh, in the auto setting was try to adjust that so that it can uh, look better. But in fact, it does not look better because these cameras down below had to brighten up a, a little bit because it was too dark. So with this editing, with Auto Panel Video Pro, what you can do is go to color and you can mess around with what you want set here. So if you notice this area here is kind of, um, you can see the two different stitches. It doesn't look that good. So on the left, top left here, I'm gonna enable exposure, color, vignetting, and gradient, and then click apply. And this weird line here should disappear. It'll blend the two together. Okay, so let me just adjust this again, and now you see that it's not there anymore. It looks pretty good. So when you adjust the horizon like, like this, um, after you know it's like straight, what you wanna do is click apply, and it'll set that setting there. So that's your first 360 video. That's all there is to it. When you're done stitching your video, I mean, this is, this is looking good. What you wanna do is go to render, and you can choose the um, different output types. You could just use MP4, that's fine. And then the preset that they have built in to the software, you can just use H.264 4K. And the frame rate, you can see that it's gonna output at 29.97 frames per second, or you can do as original video and it'll change it to 48 frames per second. 29.97 is fine, so I'm gonna do as preset. And here's what I was talking about before, the audio source. You can choose which audio source you wanna use, and this, you see, it makes it a lot easier knowing which camera to choose the audio source from. I'll just choose one, and then you just wanna choose your save location, and then just hit render, and it'll render it out. So, let me cancel this out and just show you um, something here. Edit, and then settings, and MP4 presets. So, I made my own preset, 4K, 29.7, 2997, 50 megabits per second. So I wanna make sure, okay, so the standard is NTSC. So you wanna make sure that, you know, you choose the right one that you're, uh, depending on what country you're from. Uh, NTSC is fine for me. Frame rate I want is 2997. And bit rate can go, you know, you can bump that up really high if you want. So that's my preset, preset that I created with the output of 4K. Now, after you're all exported, you can preview your clip and it'll just be a 2D flat image, just like this. It's not gonna play back smooth because I'm recording at 1080p and my computer just can't handle it. But you can see it's just a flat image. So now if you wanna edit this clip and you know put a bunch of different 360 clips together, all you have to do is import this video into Adobe Premiere. That's what I'm using for my editing software. And then you edit the clips together just like that. You just wanna make sure that your preset matches the video. And then you just wanna make sure that you export the video at the correct resolution, which is 4096 by 2048. Um, in the future, I'll do a video on how to export your video in Adobe Premiere in, using 360 videos. So once you have your video exported from Adobe Premiere, there's one more step you need to do for it to work on YouTube. So at the moment, YouTube requires a, some metadata to be added to your 360 video so that it's 
possible to watch on YouTube as a full spherical video. So I'm gonna have a link in the description to the software that you need to do this, but you open up the software, you'll get uh, the window to import your video clip to inject the metadata, and I'm gonna go to my clip here, it's clip one. So it's the clip is in here now, and all I wanna do is click inject, and then I'm gonna just choose clip one again, or you could just rename it, and I'm just gonna make it uh, clip one, YouTube, and then save it. That takes like a few minutes, a few seconds, depending on how fast your computer is, and then once it's done, you'll have a replicated video clip right here. All it's doing is, like I said, injecting some metadata into the video clip so that YouTube knows how to play back that video. So like I said before, this step is only required if you want your video playable on YouTube. Now there are other advanced 360 video players online, one of them being Colorized by the company Color that created the Autopano Video Pro software. And they have a pretty cool player because you can change the projection of the video to a little planet and there's a bunch of other projections you could do as well. And they also have a player that you can install on your desktop so that it doesn't, you don't have to upload your video online. If you want to view your 360 video on your computer, you can do it locally. And there's also other sites like Little Star, Video, and Facebook just announced recently that they're going to start supporting 360 videos. Now before I go, I just want to remind you that in the description, I'm going to have a link to every single thing that you're going to need to make your 360 degree videos. Now with the software, Color offers you to buy just the Autopano Video Pro 2, or you can do a bundle pack, Color Autopano Video Pro 2 and Giga 4. Now, if you're gonna continue making 360 videos for a while, I would recommend just getting the bundle pack because if you buy them separately, um, you kind of spending a little bit more money. So if you buy the bundle, you save yourself some money. Um, so that's my only recommendation. So that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope you guys found this helpful and if you did, you can help me by subscribing and giving me a like. And if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them down below. And that's gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.